Okay, how's it going, everybody? So we're going to read, this is the Third International by Alexandra Kolontai. Uh, this was published in the American Socialist in Chicago in uh, October 23rd, 1915. So let's go ahead and uh, get into this Third International. When in the distant future, some historian shall picture the bloody year of horror and describe the shattering crisis of the labor movement and the division and dissolution of the Socialist International, he will be compelled to declare, quote, in the depths, in spite of all the wavering of faith and pessimism, in spite of the despair and ruling distrust of one another, there arose during this time the fresh and vital germ of a new international of labor. That international that has fulfilled the great work of releasing the proletariat from the yoke of capitalism, end quote. The third international is no utopia, no baseless vision of ir 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 irrecurable optimism. The elements from which it has to be built are already in our midst and have been called into life by the existing crisis. The new international of labor is made up of such men as Karl Liebnik, the members of the Russian Duma lang languishing in Siberia, of the ever-growing, quote, left of the German and Russian social democratic parties that have remained true to the principles of class struggle and socialism. The new elements. The Third International of Labor includes the brave Italian comrades who have protested to the last against the murder of the people. In the new international are the, are the few French socialists and unions and the numerous English party members of the International Labor Party and the British Socialist Party who have fought for the fundamental principles of the working class, who have raised their protests against the war and who have nothing to do with, quote, civil peace, end quote. The new coming international is composed of those workers who have met the compulsory, quote, civil peace with strikes and uprising. But the real, the firm basis of the new international must be formed of the socialist youth. Youth, the bearer of the future. Youth that cares so little for the past and expects everything from the coming life in the future. Youth whose heart is not contaminated with the petty bourgeois mentality and whose mind cannot be misled by the ideology of a bygone age. The fresh, brave, revolutionary, sacrificing youth of labor that presses forward, ever forward. All children of age. This, is, this section is called All Children of Age. It is no accident that in all the decisive historical moments, it was just the, quote, great and the, quote, old men who sacrificed the ideals of the future to the past, to ancient outgrown principles. A person may be ever so great as a thinker and fighter. He still is and must remain only the child of his age. And every age has its own ideology and its own progressive task. When our great men, leaders, laid the cornerstones of the Second International, the principle of the, quote, defense of the fatherland, end quote, was a progressive and democratic principle, closely bound up with the struggle of the Third Estate to establish the modern capitalist state, quote, defense of the fatherland, end quote, establish a modern capitalist state, quote, defense of the fatherland, end quote, belongs to the time of the defense of of democracy against the last attacks of feudalism, when to stand for the national state was to create the indispensable foundation for the class movement of the proletariat. It is to be wondered at that. It is just the, quote, old comrades, the great, the, quote, great men whose services to, to the movement remain invaluable that look upon the, quote, defense of the fatherland, end quote, as the highest duty of the proletariat and that appear to overlook the fact that the maintenance of the class solidarity of the proletariat of the world has now supplanted this old duty? The anarchist Kropotkin and the Marxist Plekhanov, the orthodox Kautsky and the wavering Vandervelt, Adler Valiant, all can join hands, all are agreed upon the fatal, false, and absolute principle first, quote, fatherland, end quote, then the party. Hope is in youth. This is a section called Hope is in Youth. It lies in the hands of the youth of labor to put an end to this false idea and to attack with our fresh courage the new task of the labor movement. It is the youth of labor that must weld together the shattered links of the international. But while the new international corresponds to the new conditions of life and conducts an effective and vital battle against the enemy, this new and third international must have three cornerstones as its foundation. The first cornerstone must be organic, organized, unity of the labor international. No purely formal, no purely external alliance of national parties can constitute the center of the world proletariat. Its task must be to replace jingoism and narrow patriotism with the feeling of international solidarity 
and supplant allegiance to the fatherland with allegiance to class? What have laborers to defend in a capitalistic state? Their outlawry, their exploitation, their fetters? The watchword of the new international must be no war of defense in the conflict of capitalistic states, but an aggressive war of conquest of the working class against the entire capitalist world. Revolutionary Tactics. The section is called Revolutionary Tactics. The second cornerstone must be the revolutionary tactics and methods of fighting of the organized proletariat. We stand on the eve of tremendous unavoidable revolutionary struggles. The capitalist method of production has reached its zenith, private property, and national boundaries. Stand in the road of its further development. Conditions are ripe to call into the last decisive battle. The second great task of the new international must be to equip this proletariat of all nations for this decisive struggle. There remains the third cornerstone, the decisive and relentless battle to the bitter end against war between nations and peoples against the domination of militarism. War between nations and the peoples rob the proletariat, robs the proletariat of its strongest and only irresistible weapon, class solidarity. War weakens the class feeling and brings it with, quote, civil peace, the highest aspiration of the capital world. Therefore, it is the first duty of the youth of labor to use every energy to meet every threat of war between nations with the only effective reply to call the red terror into life. It is the power of youth to take up all these splendid tasks. The building of the new international depends upon them. Make way for the socialist youth, the bearers of the future. In all reverence, we bear our heads to the veterans of the movement. But it is only through the anti-reform, anti-military, revolution-minded, and internationally organized use of labor that a new, strong, creative international of labor can be erected. Okay. So yeah, there we go. That is um, the Third International by Alexander Kolontai. So uh, <clears throat> yeah, let's see. That came out in 1915. Well, thank you all for tuning in. You know... Um, this is, uh, you know, Marxists. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Tumblr, and Medium. Y'all have a great day. Do that a